Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, every year I breed Boas, I see something new. It never gets old. Year after year, I'm always seeing something a little bit different every year. I just had a litter be born and this is something I haven't seen before. I actually have full sibling litter mate babies born on separate days. So I'm gonna tell you all about that. First of all, this is a Suriname True Red Tail Boa. The female just dropped most of her babies. So we're gonna go take them out, check out the babies, see how the mother's doing, clean up the cage. If you've seen my birthing videos before, you probably know the drill. But I'm also gonna show you the babies that were born already, say a little bit about those and why these babies were born on separate days. So be sure to stay tuned. So here are the three babies that were born already. And these three Surinams were born yesterday. Actually, I got home from work, went to check on the Spoas. And I knew this female was probably gonna give birth because she had been kind of moving around her cage like they do before they give birth. She just kind of was stretching out along the side of her cage and kind of pacing around. So I knew something was up. And I got home from work and looked in there and I saw these three babies over in the corner. So I thought, well, she's having the babies. I'll just give her some space, let her do her thing because I don't like to interrupt when they're having the babies. I came back about uh, 45 minutes later and there were still just the three babies. So I, I was a little worried that maybe she was having difficulties. But I noticed this big old dump that she had taken in the corner with a lot of liquid and, you know, pretty nasty over in the corner. And it occurred to me that boas will have this waxy stool that happens before they give birth, usually a few days to a week. Basically, they're just clearing out their insides to make room for the baby boas to come out. And then I remembered that people had reported that they've had a boa actually give birth to a few babies prematurely or early, I should say, not prematurely, when they take a dump and they have their waxy stool. So I thought, well, hey, maybe she just took a dump and let go of a few babies a little early. So I ended up taking the three babies out, cleaning up the cage, putting in some fresh substrate, and she just went about her business and just sat there coiled up like she was still gravid and nothing had ever happened. I was a little worried because sometimes they do have issues giving birth and they struggle to pass the eggs or the embryos or slugs or whatever. You know, this is known as dystocia, but uh, I thought that she probably didn't have this because she was just sitting there not moving and looked quite happy and content. So I just gave her space. And then I got home from work today and I noticed she was moving around again and a little bit of uh, liquid was coming out of her cloaca. That was about two hours ago, but I didn't see any babies. Um, and I sat there, I watched her for about five minutes and nothing was really happening. So I'm like, uh-oh, hope uh, nothing's going bad. So I decided to just give her space came back about 45 minutes later and I saw that she had had quite a few babies and looked much much thinner so I believe she's done now I checked on her again right before I started filming this and the babies are ready to take out so I'm going to get her out I'm going to give her a soak and some nice lukewarm water get her cleaned up and we'll take out the siblings of these three little babies and these guys have a birthday it's actually a day before the other members of the, or the other siblings in the litter, which is kind of neat. Uh, although technically, I guess they were all conceived around the same time, most likely. Okay, there's the babies. You can see the mother kind of checking them out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the mother, because sometimes the mothers can be a little defensive and we'll get her nice and cleaned up and we'll check out the babies. Okay, the mother's having a soak. I got the babies out. We got uh, seven more babies. And you can see there's three slugs. These are the unfertilized embryos. Those are those shiny orangey yellowish brown oval shaped objects on the left side. And these are not that uncommon to see. Usually you see a, you know one or two of them. Sometimes the entire litter, unfortunately, is nothing but these slugs. But uh, usually it's not the case. And they're probably present in about half of all litters or so. And uh, 
I, I know there's a whole bunch of explanations that have been proposed, but no one seems to conclusively know if it's because of the bad sperm quality of the male or inappropriate incubation conditions or the health of the female. It uh, could be a combination of factors, of course. Sometimes it's just uh, unavoidable. Fortunately, there weren't any stillborns and some nice, really colorful baby bows here. Really active and they look actually quite large. A little bit bigger than my average size Surinams look like. These guys are probably at least around 21, 22 inches. Some of them are still getting out of the amniotic sacs. You can see some of the umbilical cords there. But looks like a really nice healthy litter. Some of them look really super colorful. Of course they won't show their true colors until they shed in about a week and a half or so so we'll just have to wait and see but i, are, I can already see looking at these guys that they're going to be really super colorful and it's no surprise since the mother of this litter is really nice and purple she's a 2014 holdback from one of my first litters and she's really nice and purple this is actually her second litter she had one two years ago another really nice litter and these guys should be really nice top shelf examples of Surinams. It looks like they have really nice patterns as well. Some nice peak saddles and of course the nice long red tails. There's one really nice one. He's uh, moving around there quite a bit trying to get out of the tub. But this looks like a really nice litter. So this guy looks like he's got some really nice markings in between his saddles in addition to this really nice super long red tail. So what I'll do, I'll keep these guys together in this 14 gallon Sterilite tub until around the time that they shed at about a week and a half of age. They like to just kind of huddle together and stay uh, together, safety in numbers. So I'll put it on top of a heat mat set to maintain about 90 degrees over about half of the enclosure, keep them nice and moist and humid. These slugs of course I'm not going to use here. I might uh, make an omelet out of them or more likely I'll just bury them in my backyard near my tomato plants to act as fertilizer. But overall a real nice litter. This is my uh, second Suriname litter of the year. I had a smaller litter of five babies about uh, a month and a half or so ago. I don't know if I'll have any more Suriname winners this year. It's possible, but I'm not going to bet the farm on it. So I haven't, uh, you know, had a lot more Suriname litters back in 2022. And I'll probably have more pairings next year. This was just a year that lined up where a lot of my females weren't ready to go into breeding. But next year I'll probably have more. But some real nice examples of Surinams and look forward to seeing what these guys look like after they shed. I just saw this guy. This guy's got on the side here has a super long red tail and then some really cool looking markings as well. You can see those intra saddle markings look almost like little uh, roads or something, like little highways. Nice cool markings in the light area between the saddles. I'll just leave you with this group shot of the babies and you can see there's one that's right in the middle of the hole, or the snake kind of cuts across the middle of the screen. That one looks like it's got some super nice peaked symmetrical saddles. I'm sure there's some really nice beautiful animals in here. Once I have a chance to go through them and you know figure out one, which ones I like the best, I'll have to take some pictures and possibly hold one back. Although I, you know, I promised myself I wasn't going to hold back any more Surinams this year. Since I have so many already, but this is really satisfying because this is the result of two generations of captive breeding, and uh, I think these animals are really very high quality, and I'm really happy with the results of all these years of work. And I also should mention that I'll be back to clean these paper towels in a few hours, as all that goo and afterbirth starts to go funky pretty fast, and starts to smell pretty fat, pretty bad. So we're going to keep the boas nice and clean so there's no issues that arise. 
It's been a few days and the babies are doing great. Just thought I'd end the video by showing you guys the father of the litter. This guy is a Prometheus bloodline male born here in 2016. Actually the first of the litters from Prometheus and this guy is uh, just a really beautiful looking animal. And uh, I'm really excited about these babies because they've got the great characteristics of the two blood main bloodlines I've been working on the last you know 10 years or so combined together in one litter and uh, they should look great as soon as they shed so I'm looking forward to seeing what they look like after they have their fresh skin getting some nice pictures of them and uh, I imagine that most or all of them will be available in about two months or so once they're established and feeding you know, so stay tuned for that if you're looking to get a truly top-notch example of a Suriname true red tail. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.